How you doing guys welcome to the video on this video i'm doing my post content work on the Derek jeter documentary the captain this video i'm doing my five bad guy interviews from the captain documentary like interviewees appear to be as a bad guy even if they're good guys but negative towards Derek jeter says some bad things about Derek figures that are unnecessary and so annoying just like have a bad guy impression in this documentary so that's how it goes so let's get on to the list number five i start off with scott rapp he's the esquire magazine writer like when he first appeared he's like i'm from cleveland ohio i hate the yankees on and on and on because in the late 90s, Yankees faced the then Cleveland Indians, 97, 98. Then later on, when he appeared, he's the one who done the Esquire magazine interview with Alex Rodriguez, where A-Rod dissed Derek Jeter. Now, ultimately, it's A-Rod's fault for destroying his friendship with Derek, but I felt like Scott Rav was such a rat ass so unlikable guy like he was so careless about it like he didn't care for the consequences and what's gonna happen with Derek and A-Rod's friendship when he published that article he really didn't care for at all he didn't realize the consequences oh this is going to destroy Derek and a-Rod's friendship, like, he's such a bad guy. He came across such a so negative, careless person. And I felt he categorized such a bad guy in this documentary. Number four, I got Hal Steinbrenner, the Yankees owner. Now, I have my problems with Hal and the current state of the Yankees and his care for winning on this Yankees team right now. But... Throughout the documentary, he had spot appearances throughout, and he was unnecessary. He was unnecessary. Like, when Derek complimented Hal, where he's like, he's like a reserve guy, or he has the same mentality as George, well, hold on a second. He is not George Steinbrenner, where George, even he had bad times and embarrassing moments, but ultimately, George cared about winning. I don't know how I can say that for Hal. And just, I wish he didn't appear in this documentary where he say, say something like, oh, fans expect from this and that. Then the whole Yankees and Derek Cheater contract negotiation where Derek was a free agent. It become an absolute public spectacle of like, hey, I want this negotiation private. That's what Derek said. Well, the Yankees, I don't know what they did. They made a dirty scene out of it. And how could have prevented that from happening? And I felt he should be responsible. And I hold him accountable for destroying the trust between him and the front office. And boy, I just didn't like how appearing at all in this documentary. And of course, embarrassing that. How, how in the world you didn't know Derek Jeter's number when he tried to call you that I'm retiring? After the season, I'm retiring. Like... How, 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 how embarrassing is that? How dumb it can be? Like, boy, I wish Hal didn't appear at all in this episode and he was such an unnecessary figure in this documentary. Next one is Alex Rodriguez. Now, A-Rod's a good guy. I get it. Like, 09, where Derek complimented as the, like, he was the force in that playoffs, in that World Series run. Like, without A-Rod in 2009, the Yankees will not have won that 2009 championship but really A-Rod dropped the ball in this one even he shared his story by he sounded like he come across as a loser like he's jealous towards Derek Jeter he was chasing Derek throughout this time and really even Scott Rapp who approached him during that Esquire magazine interview that this Derek really A-Rod had it in control but his immaturity, his lack of awareness, that really cost 
a friendship with Derek, and that's a shame. That's a shame. Then it become a like a long standing feud. Like right now, when Derek Jeter appeared in a K Rod broadcast on ESPN two the other day, like they seem to be in better terms, but it's not the same when they're buddies during his early days as a teenager and early twenties, like. A Rod dropped the ball, and it's very shameful. Even A Rod's a good guy, but I had to put him as a bad guy category from this documentary. And number two, I got Wallace Matthews. Now, Wallace Matthews, I give him credit for saying like, like where, oh, if you say this, Derek Jeter would be like, you know, pissed off at it. Well, what gets me was like when he said Derek Jeter's colorless. Like, what? What? <laughs> that mean? I mean, I'm colorless. I don't get it. Like, Derek Jeter was like, I don't ever hear somebody refer to me as colorless. Like, even Derek's parents, Dr. Charles and Dorothy Jeter, they're angry about it. Charlie Jeter, Derek's sister, she was stunned by it. Like, wow. I mean, when you cross the line, Derek will cut you off. And that's what happens to Wallace Matthews where... Yes, I give him credit for saying that, but boy, colorless? What the hell does that mean? I mean, that was about as bad as it gets, and he was so awful, in, particularly in episode 5. That's when he said it. So, I hated that. So, so bad job by Wallace Matthews. And number one is Brian Cashman, the Yankees GM. Now, I got my problems with Cashman currently and everything, but throughout this documentary... I can't stand Cashman showing up in this documentary. I thought it was very annoying. I thought it was like, who the hell do you think you are? The whole Derek Jeter and Ar Yankees arbitration conflict towards episode 5, the end. Derek, you need to change your like training style. Your, you need to more, more agilities on and on. Like, like, what the hell? Then the whole... Derek Jeter and the Yankees contract negotiation where Derek specifically wanted wanted the negotiation private but oh Cashman was like hey the leak thing came from us then who where is it Derek specifically told want the negotiation private period but it become a public spectacle which is so ridiculous then Derek was like oh What's the better option other than me? He was like, then Cashman's like Hanley Ramirez and like Tori Tolowitzki and on and on. Like, like Derek was so pissed off about it. He was very angry about it and how the process went down. And really, I hold Cashman accountable for that mess. And throughout the documentary, I just hated Cashman. I just can't stand Cashman. And I wish he appeared lesser throughout the documentary but boy 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 he is the number one bad guy from the captain documentary so there you have it and some other in consideration gary sheffield normal garcia para when he's like he, normal garcia para needs to read the room when it's in a, when he appeared in episode three he's like my god i felt emily smith was kind of bad guy impression uh jimmy rollins a little bit but not so much but there you have it. That's my list right there. So number five, Scott Braff. Number four, Hal Steinbrenner. Number three, Alex Rodriguez. Number two, Wallace Matthews. And number one, he was bad as annoying. I can't stand it. Ryan Cashman. So there you have it. That's my list of five bad guy interviews from the Captain documentary. What do you think about it? Leave your thoughts. Please stay tuned for the next video. Next video will be the good guy interviews from the captain documentary so stay tuned for that thank you for watching and see you in the next one